Hi, I'm Jim with UltrasoundBoardReview.com. Today, I'm going to teach you how to measure the left atrium using echocardiography. The left atrium comprises of one of the four chambers that make up the heart. In the normal heart, the left atrium is located above the left ventricle on the left side and is positioned as the most posterior chamber. Its main function is to facilitate circulation by pumping oxygenated blood that comes from the lungs to the left ventricle and eventually to the rest of the body. When the mitral valve closes during systole, oxygenated blood will pour into the left atrium, increasing the left atrial volume. This is called the reservoir function of the left atrium. During diastole, the mitral valve will open and blood will rush into the left ventricle. This is called the conduit phase of the left atrium. The walls of the left atrium are fed by the left circumflex artery. The walls are then drained by the oblique vein, which connects to the coronary sinus and then eventually to the right atrium. The LA walls are a little bit thicker than the right atrium. That's because there are higher pressures in the left atrium versus the right atrium. In the normal heart, four pulmonary veins will empty into the left atrium. Inside the left atrium, you'll find a pouch called the left atrial appendage that has a finger-like structure to it, almost looks like a baby's hand. Left atrial enlargement can be caused by a number of factors. These include atrial fibrillation, diastolic dysfunction, valvular mitral disease, dilated cardiomyopathy, elevated left ventricular and diastolic pressures, restrictive cardiomyopathy, and heart failure. It's imperative that we as sonographers accurately assess left atrial volume and size. A person's morbidity and mortality increases as left atrial size increases. Now I'm going to show you how to accurately assess the left atrium using echocardiography. It's important that you optimize your image first. This means optimizing your gain, moving the focus down by the left atrium, and you want to make sure that you fan back and forth with the transducer just to make sure that you are measuring the largest area of the left atrium. It's recommended that you get two or more measurements of the left atrium in different planes. These include the apical four chamber and the apical two chamber. You can also measure in certain planes that will help prove your case, like the personal long axis view and M mode in the short axis view at the aortic valve level. When measuring in the personal long axis view, you're going to measure the left atrial minor measurement. You'll first scroll to end systole and the frame just before the mitral valve opens. You're going to place your caliper right on the inner edge of the anterior left atrial wall near the posterior sinus of Valsalva. So plant it right there and you're going to draw perpendicular to the long axis view down to the inner edge of the posterior wall of the left atrium. Now let's measure in the apical four chamber view. Place your caliper just below either annulus and you're going to draw along the inside border. Make sure you avoid the pulmonary veins. You come up here just below the annulus. Stop. Click your caliper and it should form a line that is parallel to the mitral annulus. So essentially, you're going to make a cup. Then, a line's going to pop up here in the middle. Place it right here in the middle, dividing the left atrium. This is going to be your major length. Now, let's measure an equal two-chamber view. I'll start with this one. You'll trace the border of the tissue blood interface like that, and you're going to want to avoid, again, the pulmonary veins and the left atrial appendage. You'll stop here, and it's going to form the lid, in which then a line will propagate here, and you'll just kind of maneuver it and just place it in the middle, dividing the chamber. This will give you your second length. You can either start from this side or from this side, but just make sure that you accurately measure the inside of the wall. So essentially, this method uses the biplane disc method, just as if you were calculating the left ventricle ejection fraction. 
Finally, we're going to talk about how to calculate the left atrial pressure. On your echo boards, you might be given numbers to calculate the left atrial pressure, or you might have to recognize what the equation is. So this is the equation. Left atrial pressure is equal to the systolic blood pressure minus the MR gradient. So if on your echo boards they give you a systolic blood pressure of, let's say, 120 over 60, and they say that the MR gradient is 5 meters per second. What you have to do is plug this 5 into the Bernoulli equation. The Bernoulli equation is 4 times V squared. You're going to plug the 5 in for the V. V equals velocity. So you're going to have 4 times 5 squared. So first you're going to square the 5, which is 25, times this by 4 and you're going to get 100 millimeters of mercury. Then you're going to take the systolic blood pressure, which is 120, and you're going to minus 100, which is 20 millimeters of mercury. It's just like that. It's pretty simple. That's how you calculate the left atrial pressure using the MR gradient. I'm Jim with UltrasoundBoardReview.com. Thank you so much for watching.